Konbonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Actually, it's Konnichiwa right now because it's the afternoon. Anyway, coming out of Deuteronomy again. We're going to do that for a few more chapters. I read one chapter a day. Chapter 18, verse 17. We're going to touch on something a little on the eh, side of things. And the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Now, I told you guys earlier, I'm one of those weirdos. I think apostles, prophets, healings, miracles, and all that stuff happens today. So I believe that verse, to some extent, applies to us today. Now, the prophet that was sent, like Moses, that was Jesus, the Messiah, my Lord and my God. As far as the prophet who speaks in his name, I do believe prophecy is still something available to us. 1 Corinthians 12 mentions the gifts of the Spirit. It's something that should be embraced. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 goes on to say, pursue spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. So this verse, it's very helpful in saying, you know, well, if it comes to pass, it was of the Lord, if it was spoken in his name. If, you, if someone speaks something in the name of another god and it comes to pass, it was a few chapters back, it was like, nope, don't listen to that prophet, even if what they say comes to pass. You kill that prophet. Well, not here, not only do you kill the prophet speaking in the name of other gods, you kill the prophet who speaks something incorrectly, who says something wrong. They say it in the name of the Lord and they've spoken presumptuously. It wasn't him. It was them. So for those of us who believe in prophecy today, a lot of people have said, a lot of people have said, well, it looks like a lot of y'all just need to die. Apparently, you're not speaking of the Lord. That word didn't come to pass. You need to be put to death. Um, and as crazy as this sounds, part of me is like, well, they're kind of sort of right. It is in the Word of God. So the way I look at that, yeah, I'm gonna fir I'm gonna first off say this is one of those things where I'm not quite sure what the exact meaning is, so feel free to type in the comments below some opinions, some thoughts on this. My take on it is obviously, you know, if they say something and it doesn't come to pass, that's not of the Lord. The Lord is always true. He's always right. There have been times in my life where I've heard from the Lord, and what I heard, sure enough, it came to pass. Whether I told anyone or not, it came to pass. Sometimes I heard something from the Lord and even to this point in my life, it has not yet come to pass. The word was spoken in my life that at some point I'd be traveling. I'm not traveling anywhere yet, and that word was spoken many, many years ago. Although I can kind of sort of see how maybe that will come to pass in the future, although I'm not quite sure. And as for the putting to death part, my initial reaction is, in New Testament times, not only is it illegal, let's set aside the legality of it for a minute. Don't be terrified. Don't click away from the video just yet. Aside from the legality of it, I think because of the New Testament, where basically we see how, you know, not only is killing a sin, so is hate. Not only is adultery a sin, lust is a sin. Those two things Jesus mentioned are both worthy of death. And now the standard's raised much higher. And the standard here for prophecy, even in the Old Testament, that, the standard was 100% accuracy. You are never, ever allowed to be wrong. And that's pretty much the New Testament standard on everything. So my guess, and it is an assumption, is that grace follows there. And so we shouldn't be putting to death or physically punishing in some way those who are wrong. That they probably just need to learn how to hear from the Lord a, bit, a little bit more closely. And we all need to be very, very, very careful before we, they, before we say, thus saith the Lord, or thus says the Lord. We need to be very careful and keep that in mind before we say anything along those lines. And I've probably gone a little bit over. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. God bless.